A large minority of people in North Asia turn to shamans. Following the unadulterated art of Kamanali is said to heal the monk's soul from illness, finding the one's fears, destroying it, freeing the monk's soul, and setting it free. Some researchers regard Siberia as the heartland of shamanism. The people of Siberia comprise a variety of ethnic groups, many of whom continue to observe shamanistic practices in modern times. Many classical ethnographers recorded the sources of the idea of shamanism among Siberian peoples. Topic: <laughs> Terms for shaman and shamaness in Siberian languages. Topic: Shaman, Saman, Nedigal, Nene, Ulcha, Oric, Sama, Manchu. The variant Saman, i.e., pronounced Shaman, is a vank whence it was borrowed into Russian. Shaman, Alman, Olman, Wolman, Yukajur. Shaman, Qam, Tatar, Shor, Oiret, Xam, Tuva, Tofaler. The Buryat word for Shaman is B, Bu, Bo, stroke from Early Mongolian Boj. Shaman, Najat Kanti, Mansi, from Proto Uralic asterisk Nada C. F. Sami Noaidi. Shamanis, Iduan, Mongol, Udon, Yakut, Udagan, Buryat, Udugan, Avenki, Lamet, Odogan, Nedigal. Related forms found in various Siberian languages include Udagan, Ubakan, Udagan, Utugan, Iduan, or Duana. All these are related to the Mongolian name of Etugan, the hearth goddess, and Etugan Ek. Mother Earth. Maria Chaplitska points out that Siberian languages use words for male shamans from diverse roots, but the words for female shaman are almost all from the same root. She connects this with the theory that women's practice of shamanism was established earlier than men's, that shamans were originally female. Topic: <laughs> Spirit Journey. Topic. Siberian shaman spirit journeys reenacting their dreams wherein they had rescued the soul of the client were conducted in, e.g., Orich, Altai, and Nanasan healing seances. Topic. Songs, music Topic. As mentioned above, shamanistic practice shows great diversity, even if restricted to Siberia. In some cultures, the music or song related to shamanistic practice may mimic natural sounds, sometimes with onomatopoeia. This holds true for the practices of the Noaidi among Sami groups. Although the Sami people live outside of Siberia, many of their shamanistic beliefs and practice shared important features with those of some Siberian cultures. The yoiks of the Sami were sung on shamanistic rites. Recently, yoiks are sung in two different styles, one of these is sung only by young people, the traditional one may be the other, the mumbling style, which resembles magic spells. Several surprising characteristics of yoiks can be explained by comparing the music ideals, as observed in yoiks and contrasted to music ideals of other cultures. Some yoiks intend to mimic natural sounds. This can be contrasted to bel canto, which intends to exploit human speech organs on the highest level to achieve an almost superhuman sound. The intention to mimic natural sounds is present in some Siberian cultures as well. Overtone singing and also shamanic songs of some cultures can be examples. In a Sao shamanic song, sounds of bird and wolf are imitated to represent helping spirits of the shaman. The seances of Nanasan shamans were accompanied by women imitating the sounds of the reindeer calf, thought to provide fertility for those women. In 1931, A. Popov observed the Nanasan shaman Diakod Kosterkin imitating the sound of polar bear. The shaman was believed to have transformed into a polar bear. Sound mimesis is not restricted to Siberian cultures and is not necessarily linked to shamanistic beliefs or practices. See, for example, Inuit throat singing, a game played by women, an example of Inuit music that employs overtone singing, and, in some cases, the imitation of natural sounds mostly those of animals, e.g. geese. The imitation of animal sounds can also serve such practical reasons as luring game in hunt. <laughs> Grouped by linguistic relatedness Uralic Uralic languages are proven to form a genealogical unit, a language family. 
Not all Uralic peoples live in Siberia or have shamanistic religions. The largest populations, the Hungarians and Finns, live outside Siberia and are mostly Christian. Sami people had kept shamanic practices alive for a long time. They live in Europe, but practiced shamanism until the 18th century. Most other Uralic peoples e Hungarian, Finnic, Mari, have only remnant elements of shamanism. The majority of the Uralic population lives outside Siberia. Some of them used to live in Siberia, but have migrated to their present locations since then. The original location of the Proto-Uralic peoples and its extent is debated. Combined phytogeographical and linguistic considerations distribution of various tree species and the presence of their names in various Uralic languages suggest that this area was somewhere between the Kama and Vyatka rivers on the western side of the Ural Mountains. Samoyedic <laughs> Among several Samoyedic peoples shamanism was a living tradition also in modern times, especially at groups living in isolation until recent times nonizans. There were distinguished several types of shamans among Nenets, Enets, and Selkup people. The Nanasan shaman used three different crowns, according to the situation, one for upper world, one for underneath word, one for occasion of childbirth. Nenets people, Enets people, Nanasan people speak northern Samoyedic languages. They live in North Siberia Nenets live also in European parts, they provide classical examples. Selkups are the only ones who speak Southern Samoyedic languages nowadays. They live more to the south. Shamanism was in decline also at the beginning of the 20th century, although folklore memories could be recorded even in the 1960s. Other southern Samoyedic languages were spoken by some peoples living in the Sion Mountains, but language shift has taken place, making all these languages extinct. Nenets There were several types of shamans distinguishing ones contacting upper world, ones contacting underneath world, ones contacting the dead. Nanasan the isolated location of Nanasan people enabled that shamanism was a living phenomenon among them even in the beginning of the 20th century. The last notable Nanasan shaman's seances could be recorded on film in the 1970s. One of the occasions in which the shaman partook was the clean tent rite, held after the polar night, including sacrifice. Sion <inaudible> Samoyedic <inaudible> Some peoples of the Sion Mountains spoke once southern Samoyedic languages. Most of them underwent a language shift in the beginning and middle of the 19th century, borrowing the language of neighboring Turkic peoples. The Kamisjin language survived longer, 14 old people spoke it yet in 1914. In the late 20th century, some old people had passive or uncertain knowledge of the language, but collecting reliable scientific data was no longer possible. Today, Kamisjin is regarded as extinct. The shamanism of Samoyedic peoples in the Sion Mountains survived longer if we regard Karagas as a Samoyedic people, although such approaches have been refined, the problem of their origin may be more complex. Dyashegi Vilmos could record not only folklore memories in the late 1950s, but he managed also to talk personally to no longer practicing shamans, record their personal memories, songs, some of their paraphernalia. An interesting question here is this shamanism borrowed entirely from neighboring Turkic peoples, or does it have some ethnic features, maybe remnant of Samoyedic origin? Comparative considerations suggest that certainly, there are influences. Karaga's shamanism is affected by Abakan Turkic and Buryat influence. Among the various Sao cultures, the central Sao groups, keeping cattle and horses, show Khalka Mongol phenomena in their shamanism. The shamanism of Western Sayyids, living on the steppe, is similar to that of Altai Turkic peoples. A shaman story narrates contacts between Sayyids and Abakan Turkic peoples in a mythical form. Karagas and Eastern reindeer breeding, mountain inhabiting Sayyids, have many similarities in their culture and shamanism. It was these two cultures who presented some ethnic features, phenomena lacking among neighboring Turkic peoples. E.g., the structure of their shamanic drum showed such peculiarity, it had two transoms. 
It was also these two cultures who showed some features, which could be possibly of Samoyedic origin. The shaman's headdress, dress, and boots has the effigies symbolizing human organs, mostly bones, in the case of headdress, representation of human face. Also, the dress initiating song of the Karagas shaman Kokuyev contained the expression My shamanic dress with seven vertebrae. Hoppel interprets the skeleton like overlay of the Karagas shaman dress as symbol of shamanic rebirth. Similar remark applies for the skeleton like iron ornamentation of the not Samoyedic, but genealogically unclassified, Palea Siberian Ket shamanic dress, although it may symbolize also the bones of the loon, the helper animal of the shaman. The theory of Ket origin of the Karagas has already been mentioned above. The skeleton like overlay symbolized shamanic rebirth also among some other Siberian cultures. Hungarian During the 4th millennium BC the ancestors of the Hungarian people migrated from their Proto-Uralic homeland in Siberia to the Pannonian Basin, an area that includes present-day Hungary. Today, shamanism is no longer widely practiced by Hungarians, but elements of shamanism have been preserved in their folklore. Comparative methods reveal that some motifs used in folktales, fragments of songs and folk rhymes retain aspects of the ancient belief system. In an effort to prove that shamanistic remnants existed within Hungarian folklore ethnographer, Dyashegi Vilmos, compared ethnographic records of Hungarian and neighboring peoples, and works about various shamanic traditions of some Siberian peoples. Mihaly Hoppel continued Dyashegi Vilmos's work comparing shamanic beliefs of Uralic peoples with those of several non-Uralic Siberian peoples. Although Ugric which includes Hungarian folklore preserves many traces of shamanism, shamanism itself was a dying practice among the Kanti and Mansi people by the 1930s. Shamanism is still practiced by many indigenous peoples, but, among the Ugric people, shamanism is largely practiced by the Kanti. Topic Ket. Traditional culture of Ket people was researched by Matthias Kastrin, Vasily Ivanovich Anuchin, Kai Donner, Hans Findeisen, Yevgenia Alekievna Alekienko. Shamanism was a living practice in the 1930s yet, but by the 1960s almost no authentic shaman could be found. Ket shamanism shared features with those of Turkic and Mongolic peoples. Besides that, there were several types of shamans, differing in function sacral rites, curing, power and associated animal deer, bear. Also among Kets like at several other Siberian peoples, e.g. Karagas, there are examples of using skeleton symbolics. Hoppel interprets it as a symbol of shamanic rebirth, although it may symbolize also the bones of the loon, the helper animal of the shaman, joining air and underwater world, just like the shaman who traveled both to the sky and the underworld as well. The skeleton-like overlay represented shamanic rebirth also among some other Siberian cultures. Turkic Turkic peoples spread over large territories, and are far from alike. In some cases, shamanism has been widely amalgamated with Islam, in others with Buddhism, but there are surviving traditions among the Siberian Tatars, Tuvans and Tofalar. The Altai Turks may be related to neighboring Ugric, Samoyedic, Ket, or Mongols. There may be also ethnographic traces of such past of these nowadays Turkic-speaking peoples of the Altai. For example, some of them have phallic erotic fertility rites, and that can be compared to similar rites of Ob Ugric peoples. Tungusic <tongue> Among the Tungusic peoples of Siberia, shamanism is also widespread. The Tale of the Nisan Shaman, a famous piece of folklore which describes the resurrection of a rich landowner's son by a female shaman, is known among various Tungusic peoples including the Manchus, Evenks, and Nanai people. Koryak and Chukchi Linguistically, Koryak and Chukchi are close congeners of Yupal. Koryak shamanism is known. Yupik Yup. Ik groups comprise a huge area stretching from eastern Siberia through Alaska and northern Canada including Labrador Peninsula to Greenland. 
Shamanistic practice and beliefs have been recorded at several parts of this vast area crosscutting continental borders, like Yup. It cultures themselves, shamanistic practices reveal diversity. Some mosaic like examples from various cultures, the soul concepts of the various cultures were diverse as well. Some groups believed that the young child had to be taken for by guardian names inherited from a recently deceased relative. Among some groups, this belief amounted to a kind of reincarnation. Also shamanism might include beliefs in soul dualism, where the free soul of the shaman could fly to celestial or underneath realms, contacting mythological beings, negotiating with them in order to cease calamities or achieve success in hunt. If their wrath was believed to be caused by taboo breaches, the shaman asked for confessions by members of the community. In most cultures, shamanism could be refused by the candidate, calling could be felt by visions, but generally, becoming a shaman followed conscious considerations. Demographics The 2002 census of the Russian Federation reports 123,423 0.23% of the population people of ethnic groups which dominantly adhere to traditional beliefs Topic See also Topic Indigenous peoples of the Russian North Shamanism in the Qing Dynasty Reindeer in Siberian Shamanism Ainu Religion Topic Notes Topic Topic References Topic Topic External links Topic Stanislav Kruper's Photos of Siberian Shamans Homepage, URL equals http colon slash slash www.kruper.com slash index .php question mark file equals www slash and slash gallery slash gallery dot html and cat equals 5 lintrop aado studies in siberian shamanism and religion of the finno-ugrian peoples shamanic and narrative songs of siberian arctic music musique du monde chaplichka ma 1914 shamanism in siberia excerpts from aboriginal siberia vida edward j the altai turks Noel, Richard, Shi, Kuhn Chuanasuan Meng Jin Fu. The Last Shaman of the Orican of Northeast China PDF. Journal of Korean Religions 6, 135–162. It describes the life of Chuanasuan, the last shaman of the Orican of Northeast China. The Shaman, trailer. Nanasan Tribe streamed. YouTube. Eric Kasten, Michael Durr. Siberian Studies Homepage. Posolik Ungazik Kaplino Ungazik Settlement in Russian. Musea Anthropologie i Ethnographie im. Petra Velikogo Kunstkamera Rosijskij Akademie Nauk. Archived from the original on 28 February 2009. Rendering in English, Ungazik Settlement, Kunstkamera, Russian Academy of Sciences. Old photos about former life of a Siberian Yupik settlement, including those of a shaman, performing his seance. Helimsky, Eugene. Nanasan Shamanistic Tradition, Observation and Hypotheses. Shamanhood, The Endangered Language of Ritual, Conference at the Center for Advanced Study, 19–23 June 1999, Oslo. Archived from the original on 19 December 2008.